The atmosphere surrounds us on the Earth's surface, the envelope of gases pulled down by Earth's gravity. Here we are warm and can breathe comfortably, but if we were to leave the surface behind, steadily ascending through the atmosphere, that won't be true for long. For the first few hundred metres above the surface, you are still in the boundary layer, where friction with the ground influences how air moves and behaves. Above this, friction has no effect, and you enter the clouds. First of all, fluffy cumulus and flat stratus clouds, basically high fog. Somewhere between the two are cumulonimbus clouds, thunderstorm clouds with flat bottoms, but fluffy and towering above. Different clouds form under different conditions. Depending on the pressure, humidity and temperature, distinct cloud types can form. As we rise up further, the air pressure continues to drop, as does the temperature. The air pressure drops as there is less gas overhead pressing down on you, while the temperature decreases as the atmosphere is heated from below by the warmth of the Earth's surface. Depending on the conditions, different clouds can form at around this height – autocumulus and nimbostratus clouds. Higher up, we start to find wispy cirrus clouds or mare's tails. The vast cumulonimbus clouds continue to stretch up even higher above, before abruptly stopping. As if running into an invisible wall, the clouds stop and spread out. As we rose, the pressure continued to fall, but looking at the temperature, it was steadily falling as we climbed away from the surface, but now remains static and actually starts to increase as we climb higher. We've crossed the first true boundary in the atmosphere. Below was the troposphere, while we are now in the stratosphere, a distinctly different layer. Here, temperature increases as you get higher, though it's still extremely cold, and the air pressure less than a quarter what it was at the surface. No human can survive here for more than a few minutes without asphyxiating or freezing. Commercial jets fly here in the lower stratosphere, though, as there is a near total lack of turbulence. In the troposphere, there's lots of vertical mixing and vertical motion of air, while here in the stratosphere, there is none of that. This is because the stratosphere gets warmer with altitude. While the rest of the atmosphere is heated from below by the Earth's surface, the stratosphere has a special extra ingredient – ozone. Ozone can be split apart by sunlight in a process called photolysis, and when this happens, it causes the air around it to heat up. The ozone layer is right in the middle of the stratosphere, and so the stratosphere has this unique property of getting warmer with altitude. Continuing upwards, though, you eventually reach the top of the stratosphere. Here, the temperature is around freezing, but now starts to decrease with altitude again, and we enter the next layer of the atmosphere, the mesosphere. The atmospheric pressure here is just a tenth of a percent of what it is at the surface, and yet we're still nowhere near the top of the atmosphere. In the mesosphere, we find the highest and least understood of all clouds, noctilucent clouds. In fact, the mesosphere is barely studied at all. Some scientists actually call it the ignorosphere, and we know very little about it. As we climb to the top of it, with atmospheric pressure just a millionth what it is at the surface, we reach the coldest point in the whole atmosphere. Temperatures here can reach negative 100 degrees Celsius, or negative 150 Fahrenheit. Continuing upwards, just above, we cross the Kármán line, the most commonly used start of space, 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. There's nothing particularly special that happens here, it's just a nice round number, and it has a technical significance for aeronautics. Below this height, you can fly a plane without being in orbit around the Earth, while above it, you must be in orbit. Below the Kármán line, you do aeronautics. Above it, you do astronautics. Above the mesosphere, there are still plenty of molecules of gas, so we classify this as the next layer of the atmosphere, called the thermosphere. Charged particles from the Sun, guided by the Earth's magnetic field towards the poles, collide with gas in the thermosphere and cause oxygen and nitrogen molecules to fluoresce. We see this glow as the aurora borealis and australis. The temperature again rises as we get higher, but this time not because of ozone. Here, high energy radiation from the Sun is absorbed by molecules of gas, and as there are so few of them now, these excitations by radiation hugely raise the temperature of the gas. And as the thermosphere is heated now from above by the Sun, this means the effect is greater at the top. If you were to step outside of your spaceship here, though, it wouldn't feel warm. Temperature ceases to be physically meaningful other than the average kinetic energy of the molecules when there are so few molecules around you. The thermosphere extends from around 80 kilometers to around 600 kilometers above the surface. That means that the International Space Station orbits the Earth in the atmosphere, midway up the thermosphere. 
This means that it's buffeted by atmospheric tides, planet-sized waves similar to ocean tides caused by the day side of the Earth being warmer than the night side. Friction with the air molecules means that the ISS, like other satellites, must periodically boost its orbit or it would fall to Earth. The atmosphere doesn't have a definite end. The density of air exponentially decreases with altitude, and so there are a few different places where we could say the top is. We've already passed one, the Kármán line. Another is the top of the thermosphere. This is the point, roughly 600 kilometers above the surface, though it varies a lot, where molecules of hydrogen and carbon dioxide are attracted to the Earth by its gravity, but there are too few of them to behave like a gas anymore. If that still sounds like it should be part of the atmosphere, then you need to include one more layer, the exosphere. This is the final, most tenuous part of the atmosphere, extending from the top of the thermosphere to at least 10,000 kilometers above the surface, and sometimes as far as 600,000 kilometers. That would mean that the Moon occasionally passes through this most tenuous part of the atmosphere that trails behind the Earth, called the geocorona. At the top of the exosphere, the pressure that the Sun's light exerts on hydrogen atoms is greater than the Earth's gravitational pull on them, and so the Earth loses its grip on those last few molecules of air. We've now reached the definite end of the atmosphere. If you enjoyed this video and would like to have it represented in your dorm, your classroom, office, den, then 18 by 24 inch posters are available at the link below in the description for just $12 each. If you choose to buy a poster, then not only are you getting a high quality guide to your friendly neighborhood atmosphere, you're also directly supporting this channel. Thank you for watching the video, pop it a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more atmospheric content. I'll see you in the next one.